Good evening. Thank you so much for turning on, on your DVD tonight. I hope you have had a really good week. Uh, God has blessed you and looked after you, and perhaps you've had some testimonies of, of how God has been working uh, in your lives during this week. And uh, this coming Sunday, we've been talking about uh, patience. And uh, Neil, we're going to. Yeah, still on the fruit of the Spirit, asking God to transform us from the inside as we're filled with the Holy Spirit, as we are keeping step with the Spirit. And, and today it's patience. And, and that's a bit tricky I find but anyway we'll talk about patience and the the, there's a fantastic verse in 2 Peter chapter 3 and it says the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise Uh, people were a bit concerned that Jesus hadn't come back yet and and the delay in that and and Peter says the Lord isn't slow in keeping his promise to return as some understand slowness he's patient with you not wanting anyone to perish but everyone to come to repentance he's patient and and if we look through the scriptures we find that God is is patient consistently uh, long suffering is one of the uh, uh, translations of that phrase long suffering which which I, I think really accurately describes patience doesn't it it's it's we suffer with someone else's failures with someone else's shortcomings with someone else's sins we we suffer uh, long because of the way that people have disappointed us or offended us or they've um, done something wrong to us or around us and and God is long suffering which means that he overlooks a load of stuff that he he is satisfied with second best that he doesn't mind too much when we mess up that he he's gracious with our failures he is long suffering because as we've said so many times before there's a pain in the heart of god that uh, is right back from when you know when we first messed up that pain in genesis 6 6 that's in the heart of god is a long suffering pain he he somehow makes allowances for our failures and i think that's just such a delightful thing in the heart of god uh, god is patient with you and and that's just brilliant he's so accepting and it's because he's loving when um paul t- does his hymn to love in 1 corinthians 13 the first thing he says <coughs> is love is patient because it's a primary characteristic of the love of god that and our love for each other and love for children and other people is that we make allowances for each other and god does that with us i think you know patience can be a a very powerful thing you know because you know, it gives us um self-restraint uh it gives us uh clear thinking you know i think proverbs 14 talks about i think it's um um Patience comes with other great understanding or, or great wisdom, and uh, so uh, you know it just helps us, you know, just to have those, that, that patience. And uh, you know, God had patience with me, and He has patience with you, uh, you know, because uh, God's desire is for us all to have a relationship with Him. And I can remember all the people He, he put in my pathway to make that relationship happen, and then eventually it did. But He, he just waited for me. Yeah. You know, He didn't yeah. force me or absolutely. got angry with me. He just waited for me yeah. and uh, until I gave my life to Him. Ab- absolutely, that's a characteristic of patience, isn't yeah. it? That we don't force, we don't um, use bribery, manipulation, and, and all of those things. That, but something of the love of Christ compels us and draws us and pulls us in. And uh, patience is 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 a wonderful thing, and it's. Patience with a purpose. Um, Mm. The Lord isn't slow in keeping his promise. He's patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God is patient with us because he has a purpose for us. God is patient with the world because he has a purpose for the world. His desire is that everyone hears about Jesus, that his glory would be seen throughout the world. He, He longs for Jesus to be able to take his white horse and ride through the heavens. He longs to wind up the whole creation project and and make jesus lord of all the nations and his patience is with that long term in view and 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 he's working towards that determined not to force or pressure or or cajole or or all of those but but to love because in the end love wins and god's patience comes out of that love and it's patience with a purpose to see me better to see society better to see the kingdom of god grow and to see jesus exalted and and when we have that sense of purpose um then it can make us more patient and also i think you know because i think jesus is is being patient now because 
he doesn't know when he's coming back again, does he? You know, he, he's waiting for his father to tell him to, to, yeah. to, to come back. And uh, so he, no, he himself is being patient. As, yeah, ab- absolutely. It's uh, just uh, an amazing characteristic of God that I think we don't think about very often. Um, one of the reasons we don't think about it very often is because we, we always think of God as outside time, which, of course, the Bible never says that. The Bible never talks about God as outside time. God is always walking with us through time, and so that allows him to be patient with us. And all our experience of God is as, you know, we are time-bound people, and, and all our experience of God is, is him relating to us in that way, and that's how the Bible tells us that he relates to us. And, and so he's able to be patient with us, take the long-term view, recognize that my um, God's purposes for me and his plans for the world, uh, that, that can take a long time. And so God is, is willing to wait. A day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day, it says here in 2 Peter. It's important, though, to recognize that God's patience does run out sometimes, that God's long-suffering uh, means that sometimes he's suffered enough. And, and he acts to, to discipline, particularly to discipline his children. Mm. And um, it's not that, that God's patience means that he lets us get away with everything. Sometimes God will discipline us. And it, it seems to me that discipline is effective when it's, when it's proportional, when it's explained. And, and God does that to us in order to redeem which is the third thing about discipline. It, it improves us. And God wants to do that with us. And, and so sometimes God will punish us. And often that's by withdrawing. Uh, in Romans, it talks about God gave them over. Uh, often God punishes us um, or disciplines us, I think is a better word, by withdrawing. And so there may be areas in our lives that God has sort of withdrawn from as a discipline. And, and we need to bring the Lord back into those areas if we're going to line up with his long-term purposes for our lives. And I would just encourage you to think about any areas of your life where, where you're not sensing that God is involved, where you're not sensing <coughs> his presence or his blessing or his favor. And, and maybe that's a discipline thing. And, and you need to ask God in his mercy to, to come back into that area and show you what you need to put right. Because there is a limit to God's mm. patience. Mm. Amen. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Um, and then I, I suppose I just want to say, lastly, that um, our patience is dependent on our understanding of God. I think uh, if we believe in a God who blows up at every trouble, then often we'll be like that. But we have three reactions, don't we, when someone does something wrong. We either explode at them. Uh, some of us just do the silent treatment and uh, and some of us just store it all up and then it explodes at some point later uh, maybe with the wrong person which is embarrassing uh, or we take it out on the cat or the kids or something and and we need the patience of the Lord so that we are not exploding at the first sign of trouble that we're not taking it out on the wrong people and that we're able to discipline those we love discipline our children particularly um, in a way that is proportional and redemptive and and explained and of course we need to be people who are able to take all that anger to the Lord and leave it with him to deal with because we're not it's not our responsibility to judge it's not our responsibility to get cross it's not our responsibility to to take it out on, we need to bring that to the Lord and on a daily basis say, Lord, forgive me as I forgive those who've sinned against me. And that will develop patience in us. And of course, we need the Holy Spirit to do that. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit if we're going to reflect that characteristic of God. We need to uh, keep walking with the Spirit to know when to discipline and when not to, particularly with our, you know, when to discipline our kids and when not to. And we, we need to be transformed so that we're people of patience. Yeah, and you know because you know it, it's it's the the spirit that produces the, the patience in us. You know, and Thessalonians talks talks about you know the, the patience of, of of Christ, and and that's the difference in having, having the patience of Christ. You talk about you know, disciplining our children and 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 not taking revenge and, and being cross with, with people. Just having having that the patience of, of Christ and, and doing it how, how Christ uh, would, would deal with yeah. it. Brilliant. Thanks, Ian.
Bless you. Have a good time as you talk about this stuff. Be real with each other. Be honest. Be prayerful. Just minister the Holy Spirit to each other in order that we might become trees of the Holy Spirit that produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless you. See you in a bit. Bye-bye.